Good morning. Today we are going to talk about manual focus lenses uh, and how to how to actually achieve good um, and practical manual focus using these guys with mirrorless cameras. That's point number one. Number two, I'm going to go into Lightroom and show you how I edit and process photos from this lens. If that might be of interest to you, and it should be, because this is all about image quality, more on that in a second, and how using a manual focus lens from 20 years ago can give you some really great looking photos. <clears throat> so if, if we haven't met before, uh, I'm Alan. Uh, my business is Creative Pixel Photos. I photograph normally about 30 weddings a year. Uh, this year it's more like f over 40 due to backlog from COVID, um, plus some family shoots, some portrait shoots, uh, some boudoir, and even the odd bit of commercial stuff. I've had a camera since I was about 12. So why would I want to use a manual focus lens? I've got a Nikon Z5. Um, I'm not going to explain why or what I use it for or all the other stuff, but I have a Nikon Z5. What I'm going to say will apply to any mirrorless camera. I've had Sony a7 III for two years, a um, couple of years, uh, 18 months, no, sorry, a year ago, um, and, and back to Nikon since then. But any mirrorless camera, what I'm going to explain will help you use a manual focus lens. First of all, why would you want to use a manual focus lens? We've got cameras that have got hundreds of autofocus points. You can set the tracking speed, you can set the sensitivity, you can do all sorts of magical things. So why manual focus? And for me, there's, there's, there's two reasons. Number one, image quality. And I'm not talking sharpness. Image quality for me isn't just sharpness. When I was with Sony for two years, um, I used Sigma, prime lenses, all 1.4s, um, and the images I got were super sharp, absolutely brilliant, if sharpness is what you were after. I'm not, and, and those two years with, with Sony made me realise um, that in all the years before that, that my preference, my personal preference, is for more artistic looking photos. Photos that have got atmosphere, emotion, uh, depth and, and tell a story and, and don't just capture reality. If I want to capture reality, I'll pick my smartphone up. If I want to create an image, then a manual focus lens is by far the best way to do that. And the reason is aperture size. Uh, manual focus lenses are much easier to produce with 1.2, 1.4 apertures than a, a zoom lens. No zoom lens goes much beyond, I think the Canon recent one is f2 uh, for 24 to 70, um, normally 2.8 and probably even f4. So you can get much bigger apertures, you can get a much shallower depth of field. But more than that, we're talking, I'm talking vintage type lenses. This that's 50 millimeter Nikon 1.2 AI lens. Um, first came out in 1977, I believe, but it's still actually on Nikon's books. If you go on Nikon website, you can actually still, if they had any in stock, you could buy that. But of course, there's a huge variety of lenses with mirrorless cameras and, and the adapters that you can get. You can put practically any lens on practically any camera. And you can create some really great photos, providing sharpness isn't your overriding requirement for a photo. Images from these kind of vintage lenses just, for me, look uh, much more sort of film-like. And just, I th are just my style of photography for weddings and portraits and boudoir, etc. So, first part. How do we use a camera in the best way possible to get and make it easy to get good photos from a manual focus lens? And of course, um, most of the work I do is, is weddings. Um, and there are limitations. I don't try and do the bride walking up the aisle with a manual focus lens. 
<clears throat> I don't try and do the confetti shots. So there's places where I don't use it. But there are many, many places where you'd be surprised. You can actually get shots which you would think you need autofocus for, but you can actually do it with a manual focus lens. Now, this being a 1.2 lens, it's only a little bit a bigger aperture than my 50mm 1.4G lens that I've got. Um, but in spite of that, even if I put this to 1.4, the images I get from this manual focus vintage lens I still have a little bit more character than the photos from the G lens. Okay, so how do we set this up? How do we make this easy to use? Well, of course, focus peaking is the answer. I would never, and, I, and this is why I've recently, only recently this year, since I got the Z5, got into manual focus lenses because uh, on the DSLR, um, all you get is a little dot in the corner to tell you that it's in focus. It's really, certainly for weddings it's not really practical in my view focus peak in totally different ball game it makes things very easy to see where you're focusing to see what's in focus and to get the shot but there's a, a, a few other tricks and tree uh, and, and tweaks that, that might make it a lot easier for you let me run through those first of all exposure my style of photography is to Expose for the highlights. Um, I am very happy to shoot with Nikon cameras uh, uh, with the photo looking very underexposed, providing I haven't lost the highlights because I know Nikon cameras are brilliant. Sorry, photos from Nikon cameras are brilliant at recovering the, the, the shadow detail. Not so good at recovering highlights. So certainly I bias my exposure much more towards the highlights than the shadows. I worry about the shadows uh, shortly, sorry, after we've done all this we'll pop into Lightroom um, and we'll see what I do about that. I've set uh, U1 um, on this camera and I'm sure whatever camera you've got there's some sort of got some sort of user settings. I've set U1 on this to be my manual focus camera uh, and certainly with the Nikon mirrorless cameras you've got U1, U2 and U3 and you can have three totally different cameras. You can have buttons doing different things for each of the settings uh, and which is what exactly what I've done um, and all sorts of things and I've covered that in a previous video and I'm sorry my video seems to have gone really dark I'm not quite sure why maybe the sun's gone in or something. So exposure I use spot metering and for reasons I'll cover in a second, I always have the, 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 the spot in the centre. Now this is the focus spot, but because we're using spot metering, it's that focus spot that the exposure meter uses to calculate the exposure. And the way I do it is I simply point that spot at whatever I want to be my, my base level for the exposure. <clears throat> so I point it normally at a highlight um, and then you want to lock the exposure because you'll then want to recompose the shot. So I've set function 2 button on the front to be my exposure lock. So I simply point that at a highlight or the sky or a window, whatever I want to be uh, exposed to, hit the function 2 button and that's locked the exposure. I can now start to think about focusing. By the way, um, basically using aperture priority with auto ISO, um, so I don't really need to think much more about exposure. Focusing. Now, obviously, when you put a manual focus lens onto a camera, it's going to know that it's got a lens on and there's no electronic connections, and therefore it'll automatically, certainly on the, the Nikon cameras, kind of go into the, in, into the manual focus mode. And as soon as you start to um, focus, you will get the focus peaking. I set focus peaking my preference to red. Um, I've set it to high so that it's very obvious what's in focus and what not, is not in focus. So I could just look through the viewfinder and use the focus peaking to get in the right ballpark. Now getting in the right ballpark, if I'm shooting this at 1.2 <laughs> my ballpark is probably at eight or ten feet which is kind of my normal sort of distance for shooting people is probably about that much so it's a pretty narrow depth of field and from eight or ten feet away it's not 
always that obvious whether you're focused on the eye or cheek or forehead or it's you know it gives you that sort of ballpark figure but the focus peaking doesn't always pick up exactly what's in focus to be honest much of the time that doesn't really matter as i say sharpness isn't the overriding factor this lens at 1.2 certainly isn't as sharp as it is at f2 and therefore nothing's going to be brilliantly tack sharp does that matter well not if you're looking more for the overall image atmosphere feeling emotion depth and all the other stuff but i also i've also set um, function one to be the magnification wherever the focus spot is is where it's going to zoom into now Remember, these sort of lenses, if they've got any sharpness at all, it's in the centre. As you go out to the edge of the frame, photos from, from these sort of lenses will get softer and softer and softer. And you can get a problem. You could move the focus point to wherever you want to focus on. So you can compose, shift the focus point to be over what you want to focus on, and then focus. The problem is... That if you move it too far from the center the, um, the the lens can be so soft that the focus peaking doesn't actually pick up any sharp edges any contrast to actually show the focus peaking so really the way I use it is to keep the focus point in the middle where the lens is as sharp as it's going to be so you get the best results from fo from focus peaking then simply point um, the, 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 the center focus point at your subject focus so you've got the best you're going to get from focus peaking and then recompose and shoot and that really is about it as i say um by setting up a user setting you can set the buttons to make manual focusing as easy as it's going to be uh, actually as far as actual focusing goes it's just a matter of practice um i can now i can now get a shot in t I, I can now take a shot in about twice the time it would take me to do the autofocus including sort of the composition and checking the exposure and that kind of stuff so it's not super fast but many a times even at a wedding i've got a group of people talking some kids sitting there playing um and and it's not that difficult to find a second and a half or whatever it's going to take to do a manual focus shot and the second thing is so that that's all about the camera is that these lenses force you to be more engaged in the process of creating a photo um, if i stick the g lens on then i can i can get shots obviously very quickly i just back button focus short focus shoot focus shoot and I'm not that engaged with creating the photo I do find put the manual focus lens on it forces you to slow down to think more about what you're doing and to just see alternatives and, and to just maybe see things which if you're auto focusing you don't see as I say my photography is, is about trying to create an image not take a photo and there is a difference this helps so let's now go into Lightroom and we'll look at a couple of images that I shot with this and we'll talk about sharpness because I know many of you will say oh I, I can I couldn't possibly use a manual focus lens wide open um, the sharpness it's just so blurry and it's so so bad I can't use it well let's have a look and, and see what I do to process these photos and why I think they create great images. Let's take a look. So first of all, here we are looking at some shots from a recent wedding. Um, these are all taken with the 50mm 1.2 manual focus lens. Uh, I'm not saying they're all shot at 1.2, I'm not saying they're all shot wide open, um, but they are obviously all manual focused. Um, and I just, I just love the look that this lens gives me. You may not, 
Um, obviously photography is very much about personal preferences and um, personal choice but uh, let me just zip through a few. I think it's I think it's going <laughs> probably going back to my childhood um, uh, and my teenage years and, and 20s when obviously I was shooting with film um, and just getting that same sort of look and the same feeling that those photos gave me and we just keep zipping through. There's one or two that I actually I really do like. That one I like. Um, I think there is an even better one somewhere. Um, but you get the idea. Um, so as you can see a wide variety of shots. We've got indoors, the ceremony, portrait shots and just you know kind of documentary this is what's happening at my wedding type shots all manually focused um, so let's now look at Lightroom and what we're going to look at <laughs> is a shot I took in the kitchen uh, and you'll see why in a second two shots um, both shot with the 50 millimeter 1.2 lens and one is shot um, I'm not sure which one it is let me show you but right, this one is shot wide open and because I'm recording the screen, apologies for the Lightroom being a bit slow. Um, this is shot wide open. I'm focused on this timer. And this is exactly the same shot where I've stopped down to, a, I think it was probably F2. Uh, so not an awful lot stopped down. But um, we'll look at the, the difference in the images in a second. The first thing, the main thing that I notice is the bokeh in the background here. The, the, there's not actually lights, it's just obviously the sun or light coming through the trees. Um, at F2, if we look closely, that's what it looks like when it comes into focus. There we go. Um, that's what it looks like at F2, whereas wide open at 1.2, if I move up to the same place, for me, this is much, much more pleasing. And that is just the difference between 1.2 and um, F2. It's a huge difference. And I haven't got it here, but I did some comparisons with the 50mm 1.4G lens, and that looks much more like this. It's not as soft, as creamy, as... Uh, as nice as as this shot. So you're thinking sharpness. Well, let, let's have a look at sharpness. I've done. I've applied some presets and and, and I'll explain this in a second. Um, some presets and a radial filter to both of these shots. Let me get rid of those. So we reset absolutely as it came out the camera. This is the shot at f, no, let's do the shot at f 1.2. And we'll zoom in 100% on the clock. Now, just bear in mind how big that clock is in the actual shot. It's, you know, this is wide open. This is 1.2 from a 20-year-old plus manual focus lens. No, it's more than that, isn't it? It's a 40-year-old design manual focus lens. For me, if I'm photographing people, that sort of level of sharpness is actually okay. If we go to the um, F2 shot, then we definitely have a huge step up in uh, in sharpness, in contrast, in, in it just, yeah. If you're into sharpness at f2 this lens is wonderful it really is superb but as i say it's more for me about the overall look of the photo and i much prefer this 1.2 one is there anything we can do sharpness wise to get this to look better and how do i how do i process this <laughs> this if it were a wedding photo i don't think i've ever done one quite like this but anyway i've got various presets and one of these is called like a color and this preset, I love the look of Leica photos. Um, and um, you might argue this isn't a Leica look. Uh, this, this is my interpretation of what sort of shots I would get if I had a Leica camera with a very fast 50mm lens on. 
Um, so I've, it's um, it's actually lifted the shadows and dropped the highlights and the whites. Um, it's put a little bit of texture and clarity in. Um, there's not much else I've done. Nothing to the sharpness. Where are we? Sharpening. I've taken all the sharpening off. Uh, some noise reduction, just in case we've got a fairly high ISO shot there. A little bit of playing around with the colours and the saturation, just to get that look. So on the sharpness side, this won't have done anything to this. Um, it won't have made it any sharper at all. But I've then got um, a radial filter, which I always apply in combination with that preset. And the radio filter, you won't be surprised to know, is called Leica. And this again plays around with some of the settings. Um, it does add quite a lot of sharpness, a little bit of saturation, some dehaze and a bit of texture and that kind of thing. And I just apply that to wherever I think, well, whatever I want to be the centre of attention, basically. And that's it. There's my finished picture. So uh, to get through... A couple of hundred wedding photos doesn't take me too long if that's all I've got to do I just click that to add the preset put the radio filter on and move on to the next photo um, and what that does is it definitely improves the, the the definition I'm not going to say the sharpness it improves the definition um, on the 1.2 shot and it gets it in my view to a level where for something that far away is certainly acceptable and we keep the look and the feeling that we get from a 1.2 shot so when I'm shooting at a wedding um, I am quite happy to shoot at 1.2 I know the photo is going to be a little bit in many people's eyes soft uh, but with a bit of processing in Lightroom uh, I can get it to be acceptably sharp so just remember what this looks like and then what this looks like, this is the F2 shot and whilst there is a difference I can live with that difference and by the way if we go back to the 1.2 shot and instead of using colour if we go to black and white then we get an image which um, looks certainly sharper and, and clearer than the colour photo and actually looks even better uh, sometimes it's about light and shade sometimes it's about color if it's light and shade which I think probably this one would be then um, that would be a shot I'd be very happy should someone want a photo of their kitchen timer uh, I think I'd be quite happy to give them that as a photo of their kitchen timer so that I hope has been helpful guys um, think about manual focus lenses they have something to offer they really do and in the next couple of weeks um, I'll be out doing some now weddings have slowed down a bit I'll be out doing um, some I was gonna call it street photography some urban photography using exactly that lens and I'll show you behind the scenes and what I do and how I do it and the photos I produce take care and enjoy your photography cheers for now